Happy Monday everyone, hope you've had an awesome weekend. Apologies for no vlog last week. Um, I actually had some client work with Holemaker Technology, which was an awesome shoot, but obviously it took up quite a bit of my time, as well as having two presentations over two weeks. The first at BBN, uh, which you can find online on my YouTube channel now, and the second at Kent Digital Meetup, which is a 20 minute presentation, uh, which will be available this Thursday. But a really exciting thing happened last week. We got another hedgehog come home. So Hayley literally walked through the door and said, we got another little visitor. And uh, this was a little girl this time. She was bigger than the other hedgehogs we had, uh, but she actually weighed less. She was in really bad condition. She had ticks, she had fleas, she had worms, and she was hardly moving at all. So we were really worried that she wouldn't actually last the night. But great news, she did. She lasted until the morning, so I managed to get a little bit of footage of her in her overnight uh, bed in the bathtub. So with the last videos of the hedgehogs, the main comments I received were about, oh, I haven't seen a, a hedgehog in years, or I wish I had hedgehogs visit my garden. So I thought it would be a good idea to get Hayden from Bloomfield Sustainable Solutions to come on and give us his top tips on how to make your garden more hedgehog friendly. I'm Bloomfield here from Bloomfield Sustainable Solutions. Today we're doing three tips to create a hedgehog friendly garden. So in the service we provide in the garden care we do, we always try and create or encourage our clients to have a more nature friendly, environmentally friendly, sustainable garden. And as we care for their grounds, gardens over the course of months and years, it's something that we try and adapt and evolve over time. So today we're doing three tips for a hedgehog friendly garden. Number one, Within your garden, have areas that are overgrown. So call it organized chaos if you like, that's what we tend to call it. Just let your garden go a little bit wild, a little bit overgrown, so such as here. We've got some lovely Crocosmia, which now as we come towards the end of summer, starting to finish its bloom. But lovely, beautiful, vibrant orange flowers. And then long, leafy grass. So here, you can just imagine for a hedgehog, perfect little environment to crawl in, nest in, and. Uh, hang out as we've got a little model bunny rabbit there, not a hedgehog but still. Number two, for your hedgehog friendly garden is creating passageways between neighbouring gardens. So hedgehogs like to have more than one garden for roaming, they need a bit of space, they need to be able to get to and fro. You may want to get your neighbour's approval or have this conversation before you start putting holes in the fence, but great little idea to create little passageways for hedgehogs. Number three, if you've got a pond or if you're fortunate enough to have a lake in your garden or your grounds you want to create little pathways or bridges into the pond or lake for the hedgehogs to access so I like to have a little dip here literally it can just be a case of creating a little sort of bridge in or having an area where rather than just a drop so a lot of ponds you have just a dish whereas if you can create something that slopes and gradual whether that's a bed of stone or a little wooden bridge just so that they can access into the water and out again safely. And that'll create a nice perfect environment. So you can go for a little dip. So there's your three tips to create a more hedgehog friendly garden. Thanks for that Hayden. Definitely some tips that I'm gonna introduce into our garden. If you want more really good content like that about how to improve your garden for nature, make sure you uh, follow Bloomfield Sustainable Solutions on the social media channels. The one other thing I wanted to talk about this week is something that I've been absolutely obsessed with. When I really like something, I go deep on it. I want to learn everything about it. And my obsession at the moment is Hamilton. So I'm not really a, even though I've got a musical background, I'm not a music theatre guy. I've seen We Will Rock You, uh, I have seen The Book of Mormon, and I took Hayley to see Aladdin last year. But I've heard so much about Hamilton, I had to check it out. So when it came out on Disney Plus last month, we watched it basically straight away. And it's honestly one of the best things I've ever listened to and seen. I've, I've basically listened to the soundtrack every single day since then. And uh, I've, I've watched the, um, the movie version or the filmed theatrical version um, probably about once a week since then as well. And I think it's a combination. It's, it's a really good uh, way of telling history. It's not completely accurate, because obviously you have to get it in two and a half hours, but it's a good way of learning about history, about the American Revolution and the formation of the American government. 
its music is insanely detailed with its motifs and the way it uses certain chords to give you certain feelings. Lyrics are amazing. It's uh, unlike any other musical because it's rap based and you think that sounds really cheesy but it's not actually worked really well. And the performances are outstanding as well. So being obsessed with it, it's not just listening to it and watching it all the time. I've also, it's made me want to learn more about Alexander Hamilton and the history. If you're not sure about his story, he uh, was born in the Caribbean in an illegitimate marriage. Uh, his father left when he was 12, uh, then his mother died um, and he was in her arms as well. And from there, he basically, he's a self-made man. So he, he wrote about a hurricane that destroyed the island, which people got behind him and then paid for him to go off to New York City. From there, he joined the revolution, worked his way up to become George Washington's right-hand man. And then after, he's the first uh, secretary of the treasury. And he forms basically the uh, American financial system. He made the America's bank. He um, got all the states to assume the, the debt. So it wasn't, you didn't have rich states and poor states. So he's a really important figure in history, uh, his history. And more than that, he is someone that is, you, you wonder how he got so much done in the time that he had available. It's inspiring. So this led me on to read the book that inspired the musical, which is Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. And I'd really recommend listening or reading this book. It's 34 hours long on Audible, and I'm only about halfway through, but just learning how this, this self-made man went from absolute squalor, absolutely nothing, to being someone that's got this incredible legacy. It's highly worth picking up and highly worth reading. So I hope you all have a great week and you get up to lots of fun, exciting stuff and I'll see you next week.